on booktube we're doing a writing challenge i am an author and a booktuber so i figured i should put my money where my mouth is now this is an idea i've had for a little while i wanted to do a test run before we bring anybody else in on it but here's my plan if you guys enjoy this video i'm going to convince some of my other author friends to come on the show and by show i mean my youtube channel and uh do a writing challenge with me so we're gonna do a writing challenge live well i mean live for the video but when you watch it i'm not like you, you know what i mean here's how this is gonna work we're gonna do a writing prompt all right i have a random prompt generator we're gonna take the prompt then we're going to spin the wheel of genres to figure out uh, what genre we're writing in. And uh, then I will have 15 minutes to write a scene based off of the prompt, okay? At the end, we'll read the whole thing. You guys will get to see a little bit of the process and see what comes out. And you guys can give it a rating on one to five. Now, uh, I also, in the future, will be taking writing prompt suggestions from you guys. There's actually a link in the description below. It'll be in the below of every video where you can submit writing questions, writing prompts, et cetera, that we will use in future videos. If you guys like this, I'll bring in one to two more authors and we'll do this sort of as a little battle royale with the same prompt in the future, okay? So think of this as a test run. If you've made it this far and you don't know what's going on, hello, my name is Andrew Gibbler. I am a booktuber and an author. That's right, I write an urban fantasy series called The Debt Club. Collection. If you've never heard of it, link in the description below. Please go pay my bills. Today, I'm going to put my money where my mouth is, like I said, and see if I can write a story on the fly that you guys would read. So the goal is you're going to rate it one out of five. One is I would never read this. Five is I wish this was a book. Three is like, this is fun. Four is like, pretty good. And two is like, pat, 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 you tried. Okay, you figure it out. Let me know what you think. The first thing that I've done here is I have uh, this random prompt generator. Ta-da! Here's the prompt we're going to use. Now, this is the prompt that loaded when I opened it, and I really want to write for this prompt because I think it's so good. But I wouldn't be fair if I had time to prep, okay? So we're going to do a new one. We're going to generate it live. But just to see, these are the most dangerous random prompts. Incredible, right? Generate a new prompt. Without meaning to, she'd arrange two dates for the same evening. Uh, all right. That's our prompt. Here we have the wheel of genres, okay? So here's how this is going to work. Uh, I click the button. It's going to pick the genre. I have to write that prompt in this genre okay here we go please give me something good please give me something good please give me something good please give me something oh no historical fiction please stop applauding all right that's just kind of heckin rude so i need to write a historical fiction with the phrase that begins with without meaning to she'd arranged two dates the same evening this is a this is dangerous. I don't know that I like this. Um, okay, let's see. Let's see what I can do. So now the time to put my money where my mouth is. I have 15 minutes on the clock to write a historical fiction about without meeting to she had arranged two dates at once. I'm gonna give myself 60 seconds of pre time. Okay, 60 seconds of just thinking. Um, historical fiction, historical fiction, historical fiction. Okay, I'm probably going to cheat, but it's gonna be fine. All right, everything. All of writing is cheating. Okay, don't ask questions. Don't you don't want answers to. Okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one. All right. Okay, we got a little bit of a premise going here. Whoops, typo. Okay. One. Ah, dude, my dyslexia is killing me. Boom. I wrote it in the wrong spot. There we go. Okay, yep. Thank you. Thank you, Google, for correcting my mistakes. Okay, this is coming together, but I am uh, stressing. Um, let's see. Dude, I feel like I'm on a clock. The fact that people are like looking over me and seeing as I write. Ooh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. No, 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 no. Okay. Dude, this is so bad. I, I am so bad at historical fiction. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, um, gotta be more British with it. Good evening, Richard. Now it's coming together. Now it's coming together. We got this. Okay. At least, at least have a hook. At least have it, like, I feel like it's a little interesting. Oh man, under two minutes. Okay, okay. No time! Oh. Okay. Well, we got something. I don't know if we got nothing. We got something. So just to remind you how this works. The prompt was, without meaning to, she had arranged two dates at once. And the random wheel of the, uh, the memes, no, not of memes, of genres demanded that we write in the style of historical fiction. Did you see my brain lose every single thought briefly? I did. So after 15 minutes, I came up with about a page and a half. All total, this is just over 500 words. So maybe about two pages if this was in print. Not bad. Remember, the way that you're going to rate this is whether or not you want to read this story, okay? Five stars is like, write this book. One star is like, delete your face, all right? So here we go. <clears throat> now for a dramatic reading of the historical fiction about Stacy Jones. Without meaning to, she had arranged two dates at once. Stacy Jones had a double life, and sometimes keeping track of it was not only exhausting, it was impossible. It wasn't her fault. She hadn't wanted to be a spy, but there was the war, and everyone had to do their part. In Stacy's case, she had to do two parts. You see, one date was for Stacy Jones, a normal London woman. <laughs> now you know it's in England. <laughs> the other was for Sarah Carter, 
a socialite and suspected insurrectionist. By the time she realized her mistake, there was no graceful way for her to bow out of either of her engagements. And if she was being honest to herself, Stacy would rather be on the front lines than miss the date that was for her. One good thing after years of bad. Sarah's date, on the other hand, was ordered by her commanding officer. It would be treasonous to miss. The only way she could meet both of her commitments was to have both of the dates at the same time. An impossible feat for anyone who didn't have the benefit of SAS training and budget. So naturally, that's exactly what Stacy did. But first, she was going to need some help. The owner of Flounders was on the payroll of the SAS. He was doing his part to ferret out the rats that scuttled around in London, preaching the furious, filthy rhetoric. He knew how to keep his mouth shut when things that needed to be done were done in his place. He owed Stacy a favor, and tonight she was going to cash in. Plus, his bangers and mash were delicious. <laughs> it's the only British food I could think on the fly. <laughs> Good evening, Richard, Stacy said as she strode into the bar. Richard was a heavy man who towered over her in every way, but as always, his forehead beaded into sweat at the very sight of her. He was a smart man as well as a loyal one. Miss Jones, he said politely, giving a slight bow of his head. How may we be of service this evening? I need a favor, Richard, Stacy said, glancing around the room, looking for a specific door. Flounders just so happened to share wall with Du Moines. I don't know if that's a real French word. <laughs> the fancy French restaurant where Sarah was supposed to have her date with the trader. I need to be in two places at once this evening, she mused, spotting a closed door along the shared wall. Does that door let you into Du Moines? Okay, I have to know. Hold on, we're looking at a French. English translator. It means two monks. You know what? That could be a fancy restaurant. They serve like cheese and butter. I don't know. Uh, and beer. It does, although it is usually locked, Richard said, confusion crumpling his brow with a physical weight. You have the key? Stacy asked. Only for our side. There are two doors. That was no matter. They hadn't invented a lock yet that could keep Her Majesty's agents out. All she needed to do was pick the lock and she could slip between both restaurants like a time traveler stepping between two realities. In one, she would be Stacy Joan, head over heels. In the other, Sarah Carter. And that's where I ran out of time. <laughs> okay, so first of all, you guys gotta tell me, was this fun? Did you enjoy seeing the process? Did you, did, did you enjoy it? Hmm? Uh, I think that if I was gonna give this a rating, no, no, okay, all of you have to leave your ratings in the comments below, right? I'm not gonna, you have to leave it now. This is where you put it in, okay? I'm gonna give it a 3.5. I think that I could have sold it a little better. I think with a little more time, I could have massaged it, but the characters are a little weak. The setting could be more, but you know what? For a random prompt in a genre that is not my genre, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at how I did it. <laughs> and I usually write first person. So also not usually my perspective. I went in, dude, all, all three, not my most comfort zone. So I'm, I'm proud of myself, but you guys give me your ratings. We'll see if we agree. Now, if you guys want me to do this again with more offers, so we end up with two or three short stories at the end, we read them all, we judge each other, we laugh. Hit the like button, okay? Leave a comment down below. Don't forget to submit some writing prompts. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on that kind of content because that's coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next one.